Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Shooter and welcome to the chaos that's ensued with the new Unity pricing. It's been the most contested thing that I've seen and Unity have made some bad decisions over the years, but they seem to keep on giving. Now, I will try and go through a lot of different questions and clear up some things that you might be confused about and also go through some questions and things that have been finalized, agreed on. And we don't know if Unity are going to backtrack on some of these things because it's absolute chaos at the moment. Remember that this whole revenue plan is based on a per project basis. So it's based on the game that you release. So it's not based on your company as a whole or you as a whole or your, every single game that you've got. It's just based on one game. So if you release one game, it's got this criteria. If you release another one, it'll be completely separate. So as you can see, it will start on the 1st of January and then be incorporating a runtime fee based on you going over certain metrics. Unity Personal and Plus, even though Plus will be disappearing, that if you exceed $200,000 in the last 12 months and specifically and you have over 200,000 lifetime game installs, you will have to pay per installation or initialization of a game after that threshold. But then the best thing you could probably do is then buy into Unity Pro, which costs $2,000 per year. Then this will give you the higher threshold of if you make $1 million in the last 12 months and have 1 million lifetime game installs. And you can see down below, you pay 20 cents per install if you're on Unity Personal or Plus. And if you're on Pro, you pay less based on the new installs over the threshold. This is great for smaller developers because you'll probably never end up paying anything unless you match over $200,000 or over 200,000 lifetime installs. And then even if you do and you start selling a good amount, two, you can spend $2,000 a year, get Unity Pro and you get the upper thresholds. And then everything after that value, you will pay these fees below. That doesn't really help free to play games and on mobile or, or super casual games because casual games usually have a much, much lower revenue intake per user than maybe even what these are charging. So it's usually not people were saying 0.01 or 0.02 per user for a hyper casual game. So you'll end up paying Unity more. But again, this is something very difficult for developers to forecast. And there's going to be a lot of questions and a lot of things going on. And I will go through further clarifications, questions and other stuff, but this is constantly changing and Unity may roll back some of these and things that they've announced. So you can check out their frequently asked questions. You'll get invoiced on a monthly basis for everything over that threshold. So if you did ever go over the $200,000, you could buy into Unity Pro. So your next billing cycle would be reduced if you were going to attain a lot of different users. There is also an available Unity forum post, which has had crazy amount of replies and keeps on going to this day. And they've tried to answer some of the current questions, but they've left a lot of things unanswered. So they talk about how they're going to collect installs and they have their own data model and it gives an accurate determination of the runtime based on any given project. And Unity then do say that they get a lot of their model data from various different sources, whether they'll get them from open platforms, whether they get them from Steam, distribution platforms, and then their own ways to calculate it. And people are worried about data breaches and other things like that if you'd be able to access so much data. And do be aware that there's Unity sci-fi sale at the moment. There's a free publisher asset on the Unity Asset Store too. And there's a fanatical programmer super sale on all their bundles for game dev Unity. And there's also a 20% off code across the board on there too. I'll put all the links in the description for you to check those out too. And then people ask what about reinstalls, downloads of the games, people on other hardware. And they confirmed that your creator will pay for all future installs. If it's on a so if it's on a new device, let's say on somebody installs on a mobile and on a PC and on somewhere else, that'll count as as many different devices have been installed on. So you will be charged for each one over the threshold. Now there is some confusion over whether you'll be charged for a demo because whether a demo is counted towards your overall fee, the current status of this is if it's early access, a beta or a demo of the full game. So when you're inside the demo, does it let you buy into the full game? Then yes, it would still count towards your fee of installation. So it could be a free demo, but you can buy the game in there and it's still the full title that you can unlock. Then all those demo purchases and everything would count to your lifetime installs. But if it's a demo that's just a single level or something that's completely separate and doesn't upsell the actual final game, then it wouldn't count towards it. 
but it's still very foggy on all the information. And people asked about what about pirated copies? And units do say they've got fraud detection to detect when there is a starting point and there will be a way to submit your complaints to the fraud team. But then again, for a lot of developers, how do they even know that it's been pirated? It could be pirated a million times and they wouldn't know. With standalone releases to PC and consoles, how does this affect them? Is it harder to track for them? How do you know? And ultimately, how can Unity distinguish between a pirated version and something bought off Steam unless they can mirror the data between what Steam gives them and what they have? I really don't know. What about WebGL and other platforms? And then it's all platforms eligible for the fee and incur costs for installation and revenue shares. So it involves initialization of runtime on the client's device. So any single type will have it affected. Then people asked, what about games that have been released years ago that say that it reached the threshold of game installs and you were still making the revenue, then yes, you'll be eligible to pay fees. And then with Unity Runtime, the fees will apply. They don't really say what versions of Unity Unity Runtime will be. Will it be on, it on most recent versions of Unities with projects that have been built out? How will they implement the Unity Runtime? And there's also various people on Twitter who've got clarifications on exactly what's going to happen. So if players deleted the game and then reinstalled it, then it would still count as two installs and two charges over your threshold. And same if it was installed on multiple devices. And then charity games on bundles will be exempt from the fees. And there's ways or Unity will include channels to be able to say whether you're in a humble bundle, whether you're on Game Pass and other things like that. And will have a way to um, exempt yourself from those fees. Because if you're in a bundle, it could be making a very small amount for a hell of a lot of installs and there needs to be a way to correct that. But like I say, things are changing so fast. Antonio did mention that reinstalls will not be charged. Fraudulent installs or install bombing will not be charged also. Automation and test installs will not be charged and bundles will also not be charged as we already knew. I was looking through the Unity thread and people asked about how you actually collect this data and how will it be appropriate and this developer from Unity said they expect the accounts to change over time and that today the Unity runtime does not track and does not get actual pings for the server for every install. One interesting thing that was posted, which not interesting in a good way, is there any terms that could change while this is going on? And the developer did reply and say that our terms provide that Unity may change or add fees at any time and they have to provide more than three months advance notice for the Unity runtime free before it begin taking into effect. It said consent does not need to be required for additional fees to take effect. So I don't know how this affects other countries and other jurisdictions, but it doesn't sound great from that first reading. Looking at some more forum posts, if you look at statistics broken down for smaller developers, this person on the forum suggested that if you sell a Steam game for $20 and you get 2 million downloads and you got $40 million revenue as an example, you would pay Unity 46500 plus the 2000 a year fee for the Unity Pro license. And then on the other hand, Unreal Engine has its 5% flat fee over a million dollars, you would pay them 500000 But here's the problem, because if you've got a hyper-casual game, something on mobile, then you often make much, much, much lower profits on users that are installed. So it might end up hurting you in the long-term process. But again, this comes into effect that if some projects use early access or Kickstarter or Patreon, that counts towards your revenue for this entire project. And all free builds, demos, updated builds, and WebGL will add up to those downloads if they're connected to your final release. So it will add some confusion to the matter. I think the ultimate thing is you, developers aren't concerned with Unity wanting to make more money and make the business more profitable. The issue is they could have just done a flat model like this user suggested here that up to 200,000 you pay 0% over that value, up to 500,000 you pay 3%, anything over that over up to a million you pay 4% and over a million you pay 5% and then there would be no confusion about game installs, about who pirated, what bundles work, what doesn't work, what casual games are not going to work and how many game installs and different fees and all this thing, that's the most confusing thing for people. And in the forum thread they did say that the fees, if you're with a publisher, say or a game distributor like Steam, Xbox or a publisher themselves, they will be liable to pay the Unity runtime fees. So it might be even harder for you to get 
you know, onto a distribution platform, onto Xbox, or onto something else with an external publisher if they've got to pay fees on popular titles because that will come into contracts and other things down the road because it's still really, really, really unclear. And do comment down below if you've got any questions and I might be able to answer them because I spent a few hours looking at all these different posts. And do let me know if you have any other information too because I'd be really interested to know. I think the difficulty is because this whole plan has been released half-hearted and there's just been not enough information, they're not transparent enough in exactly how they're going to collect it, how they're going to get all this data and what exactly is going to be affected, how they're going to track this on all projects and it's just confused everybody and a simple streamlined model would have been perfect. Yes, people might have still grumbled and said, oh, well, I've got to pay this much, but ultimately it would have saved this confusion, this backlash, this chaos that's created and everybody's trying to put out fires everywhere and the PR teams are trying to reply on Twitter, on forum, on emails, unless it's purposely done and they want to create this chaos because it keeps Unity relevant. I really don't know, but I can only see a lot of users threatening to leave be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 200 different scripts, assets, and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Check out all the sales, all the links, and everything for game dev, Unity, and everything that I can find. All the links are in the description. Do check out my website for massive savings on my assets that I've spent an awful lot of time creating. And a big thank you to all my patrons, including Peter Steiner, Mike Cullen, Than Chu, and Isidora Negri for their amazing support. And thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.